Hi, hi, hi there. Oh boy. You guess what you just tuned into? You just tuned into murder and mayhem. Today, what we got for you is a real interesting mix. We got gift shops, Jurassic Park, Oregon, and cast iron skillets. What's that you say? Oh my god, there's going to be a Jurassic Park culinary spin-off starring Jeff Goldblum and Jamie Oliver as they uncover prehistoric cuisine in the Beaver State? That's right. It's incredible. <laughs> Can you imagine? Jurassic Park, the lost, <laughs> the lost Oregon. <laughs> oh god, that would be terrible. Yeah. No, today we're talking about the complete fucking asshole Ward Weaver III and the unfortunate murders of Ashley Pond and Miranda Gaddis. I recommend having a stiff drink for this one. You got a half an hour for some murder. <laughs> I'm John. And I'm Kat. And this is Castagast. Hi folks, hello, hello and welcome once again to Cast Gas. To Cast Gas Murder, Murder and Mayhem. <laughs> <laughs> Sad stories to make you drink. Yeah. <laughs> what that's, better why, way to... <laughs> that's why we post on Mondays, because you're already depressed. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, it just adds to it. It's two o'clock on a Saturday right now. This is not what we want to be doing. We no. just bought ourselves 3,000 fucking Bo board games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, uh, we did knock off some must-haves off of our list, so we're excited to play those. What better way to spend wedding gifts? Exactly. Wedding money, basically. Yeah. My parents said, put it towards uh, a future house. <laughs> Are you kidding me? We're in Canada. Have you seen the inflation? Yeah, no kidding. The government is just printing money. We will never afford a house. <laughs> Might as well have a board game. Right. Yeah. <laughs> when you can't have a house, have, have a, board a board game, game collection. And a book. And a book. Yeah. 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 And a podcast <laughs> so you can share your tears with everyone. Exactly. So uh, today, are you ready? I guess I should right. ask. Let's do a disclaimer real quick. I was quick. just going to give right. you the you, opportunity. You, you go to... ahead and do the no, disclaimer. No, uh, no, no. The disclaimer is your thing. That is probably the only reason why people tune in. Look, you sensitive fucks. <laughs> we don't fucking care. <laughs> we need, in order to get through the horrible stuff that we uh, research and read about, we have to make, we have to, put we have to make a light of the mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. So... We, uh, this is true crime. We make fun of and belittle and insult the, uh, the murderer and usually his family. If they're this, bad too. It, well, they're almost always bad. <laughs> um, and anyone else who makes things worse for the victims. We try not to, uh, make fun of the victims. If we do, you will never know about it. We'll edit it out. <laughs> um, but if that's not your cup of tea, you know what? I don't drink Earl Grey either. <laughs> so you have been warned. Well, it's, this is a light approach. <laughs> To, to the, true crime. To the darkness. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, let's uh, get on with the goddamn story. All right. So today we are talking about Ward Weaver the third. Oh, fuck off the third. Yes. <laughs> the, the, the third of what? The third asshole in, <laughs> yeah, in his I, line? I think that's fair to say. So Ward Weaver the third was born April 6, 1963 to parents Trish and Ward Weaver Jr. The family lived in Humboldt County, California. In 1967, Ward Weaver Jr. and Trish, so his parents, separated, but his father always remained in contact with the children. A few years later, Trish remarried, a lovely abusive alcoholic. And nice. The, yes. You know, that's... Those are the best kind. Yeah, the good, the best qualities. That's what little girls write down in their diary, like, <laughs> dear diary. <laughs> I want to meet Kevin Federline <laughs> yeah. and everything about Kevin yeah. Federline. <laughs> So, uh, Alcoholism. <laughs> so after they remarried, uh, they moved to Portland, Oregon. Do you say Oregon or Oregon? Origami. Okay. In 1981, when Ward was 18 years old, a teenage relative came forward and reported that he had beaten and raped her repeatedly. Oh, fuck. 
The police did investigate. However, Ward had just enlisted in the armed services and was leaving Portland, so the police didn't pursue pressing charges since he was just leaving anyways. Why do my job if he's leaving anyways? Is there... Great police work. Yeah. After graduating from Marshall High School, Ward joined the U.S. Navy Reserve, but was discharged a year later in May 1982 for dereliction of duty and heavy drinking. So yeah. I I did look up dereliction of duty and dereliction. It, that's what I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> the shameful failure to fulfill one's obligations. <laughs> Sounds that's, like me at work. <laughs> I was just gonna say, I was just gonna say, don't you wish you could just fire someone like that, like for dereliction I, of duty? duty. <laughs> I want to say that to all my staff. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you miss my payroll? Dereliction Election of, of duty. duty. Yeah. <laughs> look, look at the fucking mess you left here, and you keep stealing pens. <laughs> so while he was in the Navy, though, he met Maria Stout, a native of the Philippines who would be his future wife. After Ward was dis- Stout. That's that's not a Filipino name, is it? <laughs> well, I don't know. If that's... she was near a Navy base, she could have been a, a daughter of another. I suppose. Yeah. So after Ward was discharged, the couple moved into Ward's parents' house. Nice. It, it wasn't long after that Maria became pregnant. Sadly, what should have been a time of joy for Maria quickly turned sour. When she was just five months pregnant, 19, 19-year-old Ward attacked Maria. He slapped her, pulled her hair, and banged her head against the bed that caused a big lump on her skull. Jesus. This assault resulted in her having to be hospitalized. Trish, Ward's mother met with Maria in the hospital and tried convincing her to file charges. Yes. Yeah, but Maria refused to press any charges against him. In December of 1982, Maria gave birth to a boy they named Francis. However, it was later revealed that Francis was not biologically Ward's son. Oh, my God. But Ward continued to raise Francis like his own. He didn't beat her up for that, too? (laughs) Who knows? Maybe he did. God, this guy sucks. In 1984, Maria and Ward tied the knot and moved to Bakersfield, California. The couple had another son, Alex, shortly after. This one is his? Yes. Uh, as much as you can say, you know, it hasn't been revealed like Francis that okay. he wasn't. The kids were frequently removed from their custody due to their fighting and violent arguments. It would be here in Bakersfield that Ward would finally receive some sort of punishment for one of his violent acts. In 1986, after Ward and Maria had a big fight, Ward got drunk and attacked 15-year-old Jennifer Ordonis, the daughter of his friend. He attacked her completely unprovoked with a concrete block. Jesus, holy fuck. She was thankfully able to escape. Ward was charged and sentenced to three years in prison. Just three years? When you attack someone with a fucking concrete is, block, you're not trying to injure them. This is the 80s. I I mean, I, I doubt that would happen today. But at the time of him being charged, Maria was pregnant with their third child. Once he was released, he and Maria moved to Canby, Oregon. The couple operated a gift shop together and now had four children. They, they operated a gift shop. They did. What kind of fucking <laughs> gifts I know. would this piece of shit have? I know. Here. I fucking beat people up with goddamn like, concrete blocks, like but fun- I also have knickknacks. I got like a little... Like little- a little Funko Pop holding yeah. like a <laughs> chipped concrete block. Oh, fuck. So they did have four children by this time now, and their fourth was a little girl who was born in 1989. These people should not be having children. <laughs> we don't need children I from know. these people. So their relationship and life continued to crumble. Ward began selling cocaine and meth, and the couple had a slew of police visits due to domestic violence. And they were eventually evicted from their mobile home. What? Finally. (laughs) They could have just drove away. (laughs) Evict me, will (laughs) you? Finally, in 1993, Maria had enough. She filed a restraining order against Ward and left him. In 1994, Ward's friend set him up on a date with Christy Sloan. Ward, at the time, was 31. Christy Sloan was 18. So close in age. So the two, uh, for their date, saw Jurassic Park together. Oh, my God. Their romance blossomed as it would. You know, Jurassic Park tends to do that. Nothing gets me harder than seeing Jeff Jeff Goldblum Goldblum strolling up to a big pile of dinosaur (laughs) shit and then saying, 
That's a big pile of shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so their romance blossomed. However, it wouldn't last long. Christy witnessed a troubling account between Ward and his son, Francis. Ward chased Francis down and slapped him so hard across the face that it left a handprint. Jesus. Ward also became very controlling of Christy. He would forbid her from cutting her hair or going out without him. One evening, Ward beat Christy with a cast iron skillet in their apartment. Despite her screams and begging to stop, Ward continued beating her. Jeez, a, with a cast iron yeah. skillet? Like, uh, we have one. That oh my fart, God. That can't even hold. They're like hold, 10 pounds. Like, you can't even hold that to rinse. Like, it's so oh, fucking Oh, I, I heavy. can't. No, I hate it. It's like it. a fucking yeah. mace. The police were called and Ward was thrown in jail. But the charges were eventually dropped because Christy feared Ward way too much to testify against him. But how do you expect to get rid of him? Uh, it's... Hey, it's sucks. a common thing. Yeah, I know. It's just that's so unfortunate. This event happened in September, and Christy and Ward got back together in October. The pair married in February of 1996. They were seemingly happy. Now a big happy family, as Ward's four children ended up moving in with them, and things were all around well. Yeah, but the what... kids got an N64. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. But what history has told us about Ward Weaver is things are not long-lasting for him. In 1997, Ward began having an affair with a woman. He and Christy eventually split up over this, while Ward remained in an on-again and off-again relationship with his new girlfriend. They eventually moved into an apartment together in Oregon City. While in Oregon City, Ward's 12-year-old daughter, Mallory, befriended two classmates, Ashley Marie Pond and Miranda Diane Gaddis. 7th graders at Gardner Middle School. Mm -hmm. The three girls became very close friends and would have regular sleepovers with each other. In August of 2001, Ashley accused Ward of attempted rape. Oh. Sadly, this claim was not investigated by police until it was too late. Why the fuck not? On January 9th, 2002, 12-year-old Ashley Pond was running late for school. It was shortly after 8 a.m., and she had to walk about 10 minutes to, to her bus stop. She did have a dance practice after school, so her mother wasn't expecting her to be home until around 6 o'clock. But when Ashley didn't arrive home, this obviously began to worry her mother, Lori. Lori called Gardner Middle School, and they informed her that Ashley had not been in attendance all day. Oh, shit. Lori immediately called the police and reported Ashley missing. Lori stated that her clothes or belongings weren't missing, so she refused to believe this would be a runaway. And thankfully, the police agreed and believed this was an abduction. Good. After starting their investigation, police quickly learned from classmates that Ashley was never on the bus the morning of January 9th. After conducting searches in the woods, speaking with neighbors, and checking Ashley's internet activity, the investigators came out empty-handed. Not one lead as to Ashley Pond's whereabouts. Wow, I'm surprised that they were checking internet activity that early yeah, on. Yeah, 2002. Yeah. Two months later, on March 8th, 13-year-old Miranda Gaddis, Mallory and Ashley's other friend, left for school towards that same bus stop at around 8 a.m. Her mother, Michelle, left for work earlier at 7.30. At 1.20 p.m., Miranda's older sister called her mom, Michelle, to tell her that Miranda never came to school. After confirming that with the school, Michelle reported M Miranda missing. These two cases were eerily similar to each other. The girls were similar in appearance, age, and both were attending the same school and bus stop. Investigators believed the cases were linked, and the same stranger abducted the girls as they walked towards that bus stop. Obviously, the town became very scared and worried. Children were no longer walking to the bus, but getting dropped off and picked up. Yeah, no kidding. The case even made its way on John Walsh's America's Most Wanted. Oh, wow. Yeah. During the investigation of missing Ashley Pond and Miranda Gaddis, police started looking at Ward Weaver due to his history with the girls, the rape allegation, and their friendship with his daughter, Mallory. He was a suspect, or more so a person of interest, but they didn't have enough yet to make anything stick. During this time, Ward was planning on installing a hot tub so asked his son to help him dig a hole in his backyard and cover it with concrete. He stood on this slab of concrete while doing an interview with KATU television. Ward said in the interview, quote, I have no problem with them looking at me as a suspect. 
The problems are coming with what they're doing as far as questions that are being asked of my family. They're telling parents of my daughter's friends not to let their daughters spend the night because I'm a prime suspect and their daughter might be next, end quote. What? So you're a fucking suspect for a reason. Yeah. It's not like they just like fucking rolled some dice. Hey, we're going to fucking go on these people. Exactly. Fuck off. You're a suspect. You fuck. You fucking rape people, you imbecile. So when doing another interview for Good Morning America on July 9th, 2002, he was questioned about the new concrete slab in which he replied, quote, I'm putting in a jacuzzi. The last time I checked, that wasn't against the law, end quote. So even very little compassion for these missing girls. Yeah. Like, just... I feel like that's pretty fucking... Telling. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, yeah. You're a dick. So a month later, on August 13th of 2002, Ward's son, Francis, called the police to report that Ward tried raping his 19-year-old girlfriend. He also reported to them that his father was involved in the murders of Ashley Pond and Miranda Gaddis. They arrested him for the sexual assault, and while having him in custody for that crime, they obtained a search warrant to investigate his property. They executed the search on August 24th, and they discovered Miranda's body in a microwave box in the storage shed he had in his backyard. What? Jesus. Yeah. So... A microwave box? Yeah. Yeah. How big were fucking microwave boxes? So on August 25th, they dug up the concrete slab and discovered Ashley's remains beneath it. She was put in a 55-gallon barrel, buried with concrete poured on top of her. Both girls were found on the same property where he filmed those interviews. Oh, my God. They stood on the very spot Ashley was buried. Isn't that just heart-wrenching? Like, in that interview, there's... I couldn't imagine being that reporter... Oh, doing that kidding. interview and then knowing the the spot you're standing on while you're asking that man those questions, that poor girl was under there. And he must have felt so powerful. Oh, one what yeah, a it's like asshole. flashing it in, in everyone's faces. Like the the audacity. Yeah. On October second, two thousand and two, Ward Weaver was charged with six counts of aggravated murder, two counts of abuse to a corpse in the second degree one count of sexual abuse in the first degree, one count of attempted rape, one count of sexual abuse in the first degree, one count of sexual abuse in the second degree, and two counts of sexual abuse in the third degree. So he had... Please tell me his punishment was, like, raping to death by a broomstick. (laughs) Yeah, no kidding. Like, fucking They need to take the the broomsticks that the police used in Catherine Knight's Mm -hmm. case. (laughs) (laughs) So in September... (laughs) I forgot about that. That's amazing. In September of 2004, he pleaded guilty to two charges and no contest to the rest. He had a plea bargain which allowed him to avoid the death penalty. He was sentenced to four life sentences without parole. Miranda's younger sister, Mariah, visited him twice to learn the truth of what happened to her sister so she could finally have closure. Yeah. He admitted to murdering both girls with his bare hands and that he was planning to murder her next. Holy fuck. Yeah. So he remains in Snake River Correctional Institution in California. Some fun facts about this is... Fun facts. In 1981, Ward Weaver's father, Ward Jr., murdered a young couple whose car had broken down in California. He beat the boyfriend to death with a pipe, then repeatedly raped the girlfriend before murdering her. He buried their bodies in his backyard and was sentenced to death for those crimes in 1984. And then Ward Weaver's son, Francis Weaver, committed a murder in 2014 for a drug deal gone bad and is currently serving time for that in prison. So what we've learned is but, that... But the, the, Francis isn't biologically his, but so the, but maybe, still the so apple may, doesn't fall far. Yeah, no kidding. So this is uh, this is one for nurture for making evil. Mm-hmm. Which I think is yes. majority of the time Absolutely. Is, is fuckers make fuckers. I agree. I, it, like, it's a very small percentage to me of nature where they're just born that way. So anyways, I don't want to make light. Um, you know, those poor uh, girls. Yeah, so that is the story of Ward Weaver and the murders of Ashley Pond and Miranda Gaddis. To me, I, I think he's living his best life just being imprisoned. I would opt for a different 
Oh, we want him dead. <laughs> yeah. He needs to be dead. Yeah, he's a... Just the idea that people's tax dollars are going towards paying for this guy's meals. Fuck that. Yeah. Just fucking kill him. That's him? Yeah. What a fucking asshole. He looks and, like a piece of garbage. And that is his son, Francis, and his father. They are his... all fucking misshapen faced assholes. I believe when I looked into it, his father is still on death row. Why does it take so long to kill these fucks? Even when we can kill them, it I takes forever. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Those are the girls? Yes. Oh, that this is, is so fucking unfortunate. That's Miranda and Ashley Pond. This is Ashley Pond and that's Miranda. That's fucking yeah. heartbreaking. Yeah. I, I do know that the one had a kind of harder upbringing. I do believe, at, I, I believe, I don't want to say the name because I might get it wrong, but one of the girls was sexually abused by a family member when she was younger. Oh, really? Yeah. Just, it's just absolutely terrible. Can you imagine there's, there's Miranda getting interviewed about Ashley's disappearance January 23rd. And then just two months later, she was a victim by him as well. That is so frightening. Yeah. I see, like, because I've lived near schools. Well, I just I, think, And too... I see all these parents, like, at dropping their kids off and picking them up and always thinking, like, what the fuck? Like, they're not all... All of you mm -hmm. are driving your kids? Because when we were kids... Well, that's what I was going to say. Just, we, we walked to school. It was, like, fucking 17 blocks away. Well, like, that's what I was going to say. They'd be our age. Yeah. Yeah. So for us to walk, even if something happened two months prior, if our parents had to work, we had to get to school somehow. Yeah. You know, so it it was definitely different times then. But yeah, so so that's the story of Ward Weaver. Oh, and that's so brutal. Yeah, he sucks. Mm -hmm. I hope he's getting beat the shit out of on a weekly basis. Yeah. Daily, hopefully. All right. Now we have oh. some board games to play. Good. I'm really in a mood now for <laughs> fucking board games. I I'll think... make you a Caesar and that will cheer you right yeah. up. Yeah. Well, we'll have some Burger King. Oh my god. We're going to have Burger King, folks. So if the, the next podcast comes out a bit late, it's because we're still suffering from diarrhea. Oh <laughs> my gosh. Still a ton of dysentery. Well, <laughs> it's like we're playing uh, the, what was that game? The Oregon Trail or? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so thank you for joining us. We hope to see you at the next one. All right. Cheers, folks. Take care. You can check us out on YouTube at Catam Concoction. That's C-A-T-A-M-C-O-N-C-O-C-T-I-O-N. <laughs> And on Instagram at cast underscore a guest. Remember, there's a silent H. <laughs> <laughs>